It's a new year, and a lot of people are looking for resolutions to improve their lives. Tonight, we have a potentially game-changing suggestion from my Nightline co-anchor, Dan Harris. As you're about to see, Dan hit a low point in his life and found a way back. Here he is now with the first installment of our series, Project U. Ten months ago, I took a huge risk. I decided to tell a very personal and very embarrassing story that involved a secret drug habit, a nationally televised panic attack, slowly for cancer, correct. and then later, my embrace of a life-changing habit that I had always thought was ridiculous. As I made the rounds promoting my memoir on shows like The View, you had a panic attack. Just don't have it here. And The Colbert Report. Were you like a club kid on the ecstasy? What were you doing? Right. Did you have a pacifier in your mouth right. and glow sticks? I may have looked reasonably calm, but underneath, I was terrified. I worried these revelations could ruin my career. But as it turned out, everything was fine. Better than fine, in fact. People were actually reading the book, and I was hearing from them, thousands of them. It definitely opened my eyes. I, I totally identify with him. Which I'm like, he's my people. And I realized all sorts of people were dealing with the issue that I had been battling for years. The voice in the head. I'm talking about that incessant inner narrator we all have. The voice in my head, she's definitely bossy, controlling. My grades aren't good enough. Judgmental. It's the voice that chases you out of bed in the morning. I'm not good looking enough. And yammers at you all day long. This is what I need to do today. Here are the five meetings I have today. Here's the thing I had forgot. It frequently has us judging other people. Like, where's David Bowie right now? Why is he always elusive? And being ruthlessly self-critical. It's everything from like, I got horrible posture to I'm not a very good father. Maybe I've been ignoring my my youngest daughter. When you're being critical of yourself, you're busy being critical of yourself and actually doing something that's productive. For me, the voice in the head was largely about one thing, ambition. The many Palestinians, the people of Baghdad have no Afghan power, refugees. No As a young reporter, I volunteered to cover war zones, frankly, without thinking much about the psychological consequences. Just seconds ago, this command post took sniper fire from a ridge across the valley. When I came home, I got depressed and blindly, mindlessly self-medicated with recreational drugs, including cocaine and ecstasy. A toweringly stupid decision that ultimately led to this, the most embarrassing moment of my life. To uh, Dan Harris is at the news desk, Dan. This is me filling in on Good Morning America back in 2004. Just a few seconds into my spiel, I had a panic attack live on national television. Researchers report people who take cholesterol-lowering drugs called statins for at least five years may also lower their risk for cancer, but it's too early to, to prescribe statins slowly for cancer production. At this point, I knew I was helpless, so I bailed right in the middle. Uh, that does it for news. We're going to go back now to Robin and Charlie. As I later learned from my doctor, the drugs I was taking in my personal life raised the level of adrenaline in my brain and almost certainly primed me to have that panic attack. <laughs> It was this incident that helped me realize that I needed to find a new way to deal with my inner narrator. And after a long, strange journey involving everything from megachurches to self-help, I finally found something that actually works for me. Something I'd always considered supremely flaky. Meditation. My readers were similarly skeptical. I feel like I'm wasting my time. Incense. Khaki pants and pastel shirts. Why would I ever want to turn my brain off? And that to me sounds so boring. Despite that kind of PR problem, meditation is actually simple, secular, and scientifically validated. Studies have shown that meditation can lower your blood pressure, boost your immune system, and effectively rewire key parts of your brain. Many highly functioning executives, pro athletes, and even U.S. Marines are now using meditation to be more focused and less yanked around by their emotion. My life is successful because I am a driven person, and um, I was very worried that something like meditation and yoga, they don't fit into my A-type personality. Just, just the color. Like Chris I Knee, the creative that. whirlwind behind the it's hit kids' good. TV show, Doc McStuffin. The doc is in. <laughs> she started meditating after reading my book, and she says it helps her better address criticism. I was in a place where I was uh, ready to fight every single little point on the show, and I think it's very mentally exhausting to be in that place. We make this into a bigger cycle so that we get some movement. I think it allows me to take a moment 
when negative responses come in and not take it so personally. And then there's Jason Hamill, one half of the indie rock band Mates of State. When I started meditating that I was afraid was going to happen as I thought like that it would just sort of breeze over all of the passion. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> he's found that by meditating, he's actually honed his creative edge. It'll actually allow you to create better and express what you're thinking more because you'll focus on that one feeling or thought. I think at first, it seemed like it was making him like more selfish. Ultimately, it is a great thing for him. I think um, it's a great thing for all of us. <laughs> In my case, meditation has helped me cut back on mindless behavior like losing my temper, checking my email in the middle of conversations, or eating when I'm not hungry. Now, it won't make your life a nonstop parade of rainbows and unicorns, which is why I came up with a somewhat tongue-in-cheek title for my book, 10% Happier. However, as I've now learned after hearing personal stories from my readers, meditation can provide a happiness boost that goes well beyond 10%. I just felt like I was always living in the future. Najmi Alice graduated last spring with a degree in nursing. Felt like I was miserable thinking about why am I not getting this job yet. She says she was consumed by anxiety about her future. It's like I wanted to fast forward into having my job. And I feel like with meditation, it showed me that I hit the play button now. This is the time for me to start living. The day after we met her, she had a job interview and she says meditation helped her prepare. I felt like I was in the zone and I was answering the questions and I just felt I was showing my best side. And I think it helped because you're now looking at a newly hired nurse. And then there's Chris Exton. I was desperate. That was a desperate time for me. He's a father of two and a recovering addict. Last summer, he says he couldn't see a future at all. I got to the point where the inner dialogue was telling me how awful I am, how stupid I am, and was telling me to act out. I developed this plan. I'm going to commit suicide. Here's how I'm going to do it. He now says meditation has helped him get to an infinitely better place. Who knows what the future will bring? You know, I'm here. I could have killed myself, and I would have missed out on so much. I am so grateful for this idea of meditation. So think about it. If meditation can work for a recovering addict, a young professional, a rocker, a TV executive, and a fidgety, skeptical newsman, maybe it can work for you, too.